Nobody robbed a liquor store in the lower part of town. Nobody OD'd. Nobody burned a single building down. Nobody fired a shot in anger. Nobody had to die in vain. We sure could use a little good news today. These are the lyrics of a chart-topping song by Anne Murray in the early 80s. She talks about what she hopes we would begin to hear on the news, ending every song stanza with, we sure could use a little good news today. And the same is true. Our eyes and our ears are often chock full of bad news, and we long for some good news to reach us, good news that would offer a little relief, good news that would give us a little hope, good news that would lead us forward, because that's what good news does and reaches our neighbors too because they sure could use some today. But we forget. As followers of Christ, we always have good news, hope-filled good news, saving grace good news, life-changing good news. So today's question is, with all that good news, how are you reaching others with it? How is the church, how are we reaching others with it? Because we all, our neighbors too, could use some today. Let us pray. Holy God, we come to lay our lives before your holy scripture that we may find the grace that lies waiting there. Let us people be a goal, a people that go and are bold enough to share your good news in all places and in all times. And all God's people said. Today's Bible story is about reaching out with good news and watching it change a life which literally changes history, including our history. But let me back up a minute. Starting in verse 10, it begins, Ananias was a disciple. That's the only descriptor we get. He was a disciple, a studier of Jesus, a follower of Jesus, a devotee to Jesus. That is the only descriptor of this person named Ananias because Ananias in this story defines for us, for our lives, what being a disciple means. It's his story and our story today. So the Lord called to Ananias by name. And Ananias replied, here I am, Lord. I'm working through this scripture verse by verse. And so we see throughout scripture that God is always calling people specifically by name, ordinary people. Sometimes he calls them in a vision. Sometimes it's in the dark of night, bedtime. Sometimes it's at midnight in a field. But the Lord calls. And I promise you this this morning. He has and is calling you by name even now. And every time we see the good news of Christ reach and change a life, a family, a community, it almost always begins with God calling someone and them answering, Here I am, Lord, so may it be our answer as God calls. But know this. The next instruction throughout the Bible, the next instruction to Ananias, the next instruction to us is get up and go. Verse 11, get up and go. God said that same thing to Father Abraham. He said that same thing to the prophet Isaiah. Jesus says that to those he healed and to those who follow him. Go with the good news. But we get confused at church, don't we? We disciples called church, we get confused. We followers of today like to wonder. Here at the church, who's going to come to our event? Who's going to come to our youth group? Who's going to come into our worship? How do we get our people in? We ask, we question, we criticize. How do we get the people to come? But that was never the call. It always begins to the disciples called church. Jesus calling them to go to go outside to reach others and share the good news. 
The story goes, get up and go to the street called Straight at the house of Judas. Look for a man called Tarsus, of Tarsus named Saul, said God to Ananias. Ananias replies to God, are you kidding? I don't want to go to that guy. Anyone but him, God. That's essentially Ananias' answer because he's heard that this guy named Saul is evil. He threatens and murders disciples. So Ananias pleads against it because he was afraid. And I'm so thankful they included this part in the story, that they didn't cut that part out. Because you and I know, in the deep of our guts, in the deep of our souls, somewhere in the back of our minds, that's our answer. There's those neighbors we don't want to go to. Because they're a threat. Maybe they're not a threat to our lives. Maybe they're a threat to our way of lives. Maybe they're a threat to our view of the world. Maybe they're a threat to the standards we hold. But the one we hate, God loves. The one we think less of. The one we don't want to go to. The one we think bad. The very one is the one for whom God has a plan. Ananias says, I don't want to go. And God says, listen to the plan. Go. For Saul is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. The one Ananias calls evil, God plans to carry out a Christ-filled movement for thousands of years. But it begins with Ananias saying, yes, Lord, here I am, and I will go with the good news. God is still relying on us, church, to go and reach out with the good news of Jesus Christ. So Ananias went. He left his house, he left his church, he left his neighborhood, he left his workplace, he left his comfort zone. And he went to the community, to the house of Judas on Straight Street, to the murderous neighbor named Saul. And it says, verse 17, he entered the house, he laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother, hear that word, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now that is the good news of the love and power of Jesus Christ. But focus for a minute on how Ananias shared the good news. He was at his neighbor's house offering a hand of blessing. He calls him brother, a term only used for those of your same family, those of your same community, those of your shared faith. Ananias came to the murderous stranger, looked him in the eye, shared his face, studied his face, and claimed him brother as one of his own. That's how Ananias did it. How do we? How do we as disciples, as his church, reach out with the good news? There are so many ways to reach out with this good news. The most frequent way we churches reach out with the good news is what's called outreach. Author Robert Lupton calls it relief. You see, there will always be a need for relief. We give food. We donate food for the hungry. We, we donate hygiene kits for disaster victims. We, we donate school supplies for students without. We reach out to the immediate need by giving something. It's necessary. It will always be, and we should continue over and over to reach out with the good news in this way. However, this is so often where we stop as followers and churches. This is our go-to when it comes to reaching our neighbor. We want neighbors to know God's love and ours, but we do it from afar. It's a one-direction love from us to you, and that isn't the kind of relationship that builds brothers and sisters. It's not the kind of relationship that says, I am yours, neighbor, and you are mine. So we just can't stop at outreach. 
It can't be the only way we answer our call. Robert Lupton describes another way of reaching, which I'll call support. Support is this. It's supply hubs and opportunities for neighbors to come together and those who have particular needs to find them, but by their own decision. It's the food pantry who no longer packages foods and chooses for families and passes it out, but the pantry who invites neighbors in and neighbors shop for their own families while that space is shared and neighborly conversation happens. It's Flesher Place in Indy that doesn't Christmas shop for families, wrap it and drop it off, but instead opens the space and invites neighbors to come in and shop for the needs of their own families as neighborly conversations happen and they wrap gifts together. It's person-to-person -person contact, each person living their dignity, their will, sharing resources and time, and this is important, and we should always keep sharing good news in this way, but it's still one direction giving. It's still usually one time on borrowed space, and, the good, and if the good news is shared, it's only through transaction. So at, to answer our call, we can't stop at support. It can't be the only way that we answer the call. Because with Ananias, we see what's called engagement. One neighbor to another sharing time and space in the neighbor's house. And as Ananias calls him brother, we learn what engagement really means. Engagement is this, church. It's like that one church who developed a partnership with their neighborhood apartment complex Residents of the complex and, and residents of our, our members of the church came together to provide homework support in the apartment complex celebration room and offered snacks. And together, after they do that, families and families meet each other, and over time, they begin to do what's called a swap. And so, one evening... In comes a church member who teaches how to make greeting cards, and all the neighbors gather, and all the church members gather together. And on another, an apartment resident teaches how to make his famous spaghetti sauce and how to can it. And residents of the apartment and members of the church are together. And in the midst of that, neighbors with monetary needs are supported, and over time and naturally, in relationship, prayers begin to be shared. And eventually, the name of Jesus and the good, the good news of Jesus is shared out loud. And through relationship, neighbors begin to see each other as their own brothers and sisters of one shared humanity. And because Jesus was shared and Jesus does what Jesus did, he began to change hearts and soften hearts and build community and save souls. Because Jesus does the saving, we don't. Our part is being called and sent to engage with our neighbors over time, building relationships so that we learn that our neighbors are our brothers and our sisters and our neighbors learn we are theirs. This, friends, is an important part of the Castleton vision. Yes, we share the good news in outreach. Yes, we share the good news in support. But yes, we must continue to grow as those who share the good news in engagement, in relationship, and begin to share the name of Jesus out loud. The definition for reaching seeking, reaching, and welcoming others into serving Christ. The definition of reaching leads, reaching leads to relationship through intentional, meaning ongoing, engagement that results in personal and corporate evangelism. And some of you just squirmed in your seat because of the word evangelism, so let me be clear. It just means sharing the good news in relationship. Ananias engaged Saul. He shared the good news and called him brother and the Spirit did what the Spirit does and he cleared the scales and he gave him sight out of, out of thanks and out of awe. Saul became Paul. He was baptized in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he began to share the good news and minister that fills the back of your Bible 
that has been sharing good news and reaching millions of people for thousands of years, including you. So good people of God, hear me this day. You have good news to share. The radical power of the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and you are called to share it by going to the neighbor and learning their gifts and graces and humanity, and in that relationship, sharing the good news of Christ. And God will do what God does, and your faithfulness can be the way that God reaches generations with good news. Just like Ananias, because we all could use some good news.